up next on Hoops Arkansas Football. Highlights from the second week of the high school season, including Sylvan Hills against Little Rock Catholic, the Danville Little Johns at Arkansas Baptist, the Springdale Shootout, or should we say Blowout, and Faulkner County rivals Greenbrier and Valonia battling for the Judges' Cup. Highlights of those games and many more. Plus, we'll take you to baseball for this week's jumbo-sized Scholar Athlete of the Week. And then we'll head to Mayflower for the Spirit Student of the Week. Highlights, pre-game pep talks, post-game reaction, and the latest Hootons rankings. It's all coming up in the next half hour. It's Hootons Arkansas Football. Let's take it to him. This is our time of the year. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. The second week of the high school season is in the books. And it was an exciting week. A few upsets last night, not too many. We'll show you the latest Hooton's rankings, how the results affected this week's rankings coming up in the next 30 minutes. Of course, highlights from all across the state. And tonight, we will start 30 minutes of high school fun with a look at last night's games in Class 5A. The biggest crowd of last night could be found at arguably Class 5A's top rivalry game, Benton and Bryant at War Memorial Stadium. Close to 7,000 fans on hand to see Benton really outplay Bryant. Benton quarterback Brian Greer passed for 217 yards last night and kept an 89-yard scoring drive with this touchdown toss to Jeremy Westerman. Benton was up 7-0. Bryant comes back with its quarterback, Lance Parker, getting it done on the ground. Parker has committed to play for Vanderbilt. He gets loose for a 69-yard gain, and that would lead to a field goal. Bryant only had five yards passing until the final minutes of the first half. That's when Parker hooks up with A.J. Nixon for this 48-yard gain. Bryant added another field goal and cut Benton's lead to 7-6 at the half. In the second half, Parker passes to Brandon St. Pierre. This was the Hornets' only touchdown of the night. It tied it 13-13 in the third quarter. Midway through the fourth quarter now, Parker goes deep. Bitten Zach Teeter will tip it, but great concentration by Brian Zach Cardinal, and the race is on, but look at Bitten's Justin Ray. Touchdown saving tackle. Bryant's kicking game was atrocious last year, but last night the hero of the game, sophomore kicker Todd Bryant. He kicked an extra point and three field goals, including a 32-yarder for the game winner. Final score from the Salt Bowl, Bryant 16, Benton 13. In the Air Base Bowl, Jacksonville had no trouble with North Pulaski. On the last play of the first quarter, this is Jacksonville quarterback Chris Rodriguez. His pass is tipped by North Pulaski's Byron Lawrence, but Larry Wayne grabs it for the touchdown, or was it? Looks good, and so does Jacksonville so far this season. Final score, Red Devils 40, North Pulaski 0. Hooton's Arkansas football number two team, Russellville, traveled to a packed house at John McConnell Stadium last night in Conway to take on the Wampus Cats. More than 4,000 fans on hand last night, and it was a frustrating one for Russellville quarterback Landon Leach, who was under pressure most of the night, and this is the first of two interceptions. Conway's Scott Coulter, who scored three touchdowns last week, returns the interception to the Russellville 35. On the very next play, it's Conway's Kevin Wardlow, scoring his first of two touchdowns. No need to change hands with the ball when you're faster than the defenders, baby. Conway led it 7-zip. Russell responds, though, ties it up. Leach hits Aaron Williams across the middle. The Cyclones would again tie it up at 14 early in the third quarter, but it was all Conway after that. Senior fullback Peyton Hillis led a bruising Conway ground game that rolled up 377 yards. Final score, Conway 35, Russellville 14. Kevin was sick for 10 days after losing to Conway. Last night, Little Rock Fair was the perfect remedy for the Panthers. 
Cabot's up 13 to zip. We pick up the action, and here comes junior fullback Chris Robertson right at you. 25-yard touchdown. A little bit later, it's Chris's older brother. That's Jake Robertson, number one, pulling down the interception, and that sets up baby brother. He scores from a couple of yards out. That's Chris's third touchdown of the night, and Cabot is feeling a lot better now. Final score, Panthers 41, Little Rock Fair 14. Little Rock Central and El Dorado were both big winners week one. Last night, the two hooked up at Quigley Stadium, and El Dorado led 7-6 at halftime and added to its lead with this 41-yard field goal from a sophomore. Justin Gurren knocks it through. Little Rock Central was able to run the ball a little bit in the first half, but not in the second half. Tiger sophomore quarterback Clark Irwin runs the option, nobody to pitch it to, and El Dorado's Josh Thomas strips it. The Tigers managed just three first downs in the second half, but Central's defense did put up a goal line stand to keep this one close. Final score, El Dorado 17, Central 6. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 5A rankings. Springdale, our preseason number one, is still holding tight, but the Bulldogs play national power jinx next Saturday night. El Dorado moves up to number two, then it's Southside. Conway has enough talent to win it all this year. Russellville started the year at number five, and that's right where the Cyclones are again. Then it's Fayetteville. The Purple Dogs led North Little Rock by a couple of touchdowns only about six minutes into the game last night. Bryant drops down one spot, barely getting by Benton. Texarkana is 0-2 against teams from Texas. Then it's Searcy and Northside. Pine Bluff starts the second 10. Then it's undefeated Bentonville. West Memphis, Cabot, and Jacksonville. Little Rock McQuellen's undefeated too. Then it's Rogers, Camden Fairview, who has much improved this year and could be great next fall. Watson Chapel is number 19 and undefeated Blytheville is at number 20. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from Class 4A and the latest 4A rankings are next. The Eagles' nest was packed Friday night as Bologna played host to Faulkner County rival Greenbrier for the second annual First Service Bank Judges Cup. Bologna won the cup a year ago, and the Eagles looked as though they had snatched it again as they built a commanding 36-8 halftime lead. But there's no give up in Greenbrier as the Panthers open the second half with a 13-play drive. Junior Rodney Rhodes hits the quick up the middle for a Greenbrier first down. Eight plays later, junior quarterback Brandon Rowland drops back and finds sophomore Trevor Segrist with the touchdown pass. That cut Bologna's lead to 38-14 but Greenbrier would get no closer. Bologna kept the Panthers at bay with a bruising running game. And check out the poise of senior quarterback Michael Cummings. He did it all night long, milking the play clock in the second half. And Bologna, your Eagles are Judges Cup champs again. Final score, Bologna 42, Greenbrier 14. We come out, started in the first half, got up, got up on them. We just kept pumping ourselves up. This is a big rival against us anyway. Last year they started the Judges' Cup, so we just now we won it twice in a row. The Little Rock Castle Crockets and the Sylvan Hills Bears engaged in a ground war Thursday night at War Memorial Stadium. Interesting because a week ago, Sylvan Hills quarterback Colby Sanders passed for 405 yards and three touchdowns. But the Bears had to turn to their running game against Catholic. Sophomore Camming Kareem totaled 263 all-purpose yards, including this impressive 28-yard touchdown run to tie the game 7-7 in the second quarter. The Bears went up 20-7 in the third quarter when Sanders and Kareem team up on the option for a 17-yard score. But Catholic would rally and take the lead. A senior fullback Chance Yoder barrels in from the one-yard line, and senior Chris Strasser makes the kick for a 21-20 Catholic lead with just over five minutes to play. But less than 30 seconds later, the Bears would capitalize after Kareem returned the kick 42 yards. Senior running back Chase Campbell will get loose down the left sideline for the 50-yard touchdown and the game winner. Final score, Sylvan Hills 26, Little Rock Catholic 21. Cam and Kareem, he's a warrior. He, he'll battle through anything. He runs so hard all the time. He gives it everything he has. He's, ex he's, he's a guy you want on your team in your backfield. He's a good leader as a sophomore. 
One of the bigger rivalries in Jefferson County is Watson Chapel and Whitehall, and they usually stage a great game. Watson Chapel led 10 to nothing late in the first half when Wildcat quarterback Zach Hale finds sophomore Damon Parks across the middle and Damon accelerates. But watch Whitehall's Chris Johnson. He's the only guy who can stop him. He sheds a blocker, makes the TD save and tackle. But it wouldn't matter. As Watson Chapel struck early in the second half, Hale heaves the ball to sophomore Tyrese Flock. He flips over the goal line for another Watson Chapel score. And the Wildcat defense held Whitehall to just 44 yards offense. The final, Chapel 17, Whitehall 0. Both Little Rock Parkview and the Mills Comets were looking for their first win of the season Friday night. Mills quarterback Daniel Brown looks for the end zone. He gallops to the Parkview one yard line. A couple of plays later, he punches it in and Mills was up seven zip. Parkview quarterback Antoine James had a big night, completing eight of 19 passes, 126 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Jamal Anderson gets this one for a long game. And on the next play, it's James connecting with Nick Smith for the touchdown. That's a three play, 52 yard scoring drive for Parkview. And Parkview running back David Kinnebrew didn't have a bad night either. 165 yards and a couple of touchdowns as Parkview rolls. Final score, Patriots 34, Mills 21. And here is Hooten's Arkansas football updated. Class 4A ranking, Stuttgart stays on top. The Ricebird defense put a crunch on Pulaski Academy's pretty offense last night. Greenwood is at number two, and there's Pulaski Robinson. Alma's at number four. The Airedales always seem to find a way to win. Last night, they did it in the final minutes to beat Ozark. Crossit is number five, and Magnolia is number six. After an impressive win over a small school power, Painesville, Louisiana last night. Wind drops to number seven. There's hope in Batesville. Sylvan Hills is number 10. Hot Springs is off to a 2-0 start for the first time in four years. Monticello drops to number 12. Then it's Clarksville, the Golden Goblins, and West Helena. Mills all the way down to number 16. The Comets have been disappointing in two losses to Class 5A teams. Green County Tech is 17. Then it's the Devil Dogs, the Badgers, and the Bologna, winners of last night's Judges' Cup, moving into the top 20. Now the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Batesville senior Ben Dobbs is the key to the Pioneers' success in the trenches and may have the ability to play at the next level. But Ben marches to the beat of a different drummer. Actually, he plays several instruments and has already written his own concerto. In fact, Ben is so serious about his musical ambitions that he may not have time for football in college. Here's a guy who knows what he wants and is not afraid to go get it. Dedication is the number one thing. Dedication, you always work, you always pursue everything. And if you do that to the best of your abilities, you know, you're going to get there some way or another. Good advice from Ben Dobbs, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Mark, and congratulations to Big Bad Ben Dobbs from Batesville, our Marines Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooten's Arkansas football, a look at Class 3A. My first security bank. And we begin our Class 3A highlights with new AAA member Shiloh Christian. The Saints tied Class 5A Springdale a couple of years ago. Last year, the bigger Bulldogs beat Shiloh by just a touchdown. But Tuesday night at Razorback Stadium, it was a blowout. Springdale coach Gus Malzahn is only 36 years old, but he earned his 100th career victory against his old team. Springdale led Shiloh 27 to nothing at halftime. Brandon Martinez passed 20 yards to sophomore Aaron Davis for the Bulldogs' first score, and junior Zach Butler busted a 52-yard run to make it 14 to zip early. Shiloh quarterback Nate Emmert chunked long in the first half, and Mike Yates would run under the tipped pass, but Emmert was injured just a little bit later, and he left the game with a broken collarbone. And the Saints would struggle on offense the rest of the night. In fact, Shiloh managed just 62 yards total as sophomore quarterback Trey Ferguson struggled against Springdale's stingy defense that has allowed only one touchdown the first two weeks. Final score, Springdale 41, Shiloh Christian 0. I want everybody here what I'm going to say. Everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, look at this one I say every time. You got 48 minutes to live it and a lifetime to remember. Let's go! The Delaware Cup.
Cardinals have a history of playing crosstown Class 5A rival Pine Bluff pretty tough. And the Cardinals were pumped up for first year coach George Shelton last night. Shelton was an assistant coach at Pine Bluff just a few years ago, but the inside information didn't help Dollar Way on its first possession as the Zebra defense clamps down on fourth and short and takes over deep in Cardinal territory. Two plays later, it's Martell Mallett rumbling 10 yards untouched for the Zebra touchdown. A little later in the first quarter, it's Pine Bluff's Cedric McBride finding room around the outside and glad. 15 yards for the score, and the route was on. Pine Bluff's defense held Dollar Way to just 29 yards in the first half and 92 for the game. Final score, Pine Bluff Z's 42, Dollar Way 0. And here is a look at Hooten's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. The top seven stays the same as a week ago. Warren is still on top after mauling Monticello last night. Then it's Moonville, Ozark, Pulaski Academy. The Bruins were stopped at the goal line twice last night in a loss against number one Stuttgart. Gosnell's number five, and then it's Star City and Dumas. The Bobcats have won six of their past seven games down at Dumas. Then it's Nashville, Ashdown, and Rivercrest. The Colts have won a pair of games against Class 4A teams this year. Newport starts the second 10. Shallow Christian drops to number 12. The Saints are winless this year and were shut out last week by Springdale. Truman's 13, there's Osceola. The Seminoles are winless this season. Pocahontas 15, Prairie Grove at 16, and Oak Grove 17. D Queen came close to upsetting Boonville last night. Then it's the Sand Lizards and Hamburg, which almost upset Crossett in the Battle of Ashley County last night. Now, the Arkansas Department of Higher Education Spirit Student of the Week. Jessica Baker spent seven days a week doing a variety of activities. Whether it's Taekwondo or studying to keep her straight A average, every day has something to do. I like the activities. I like keeping busy and having all these things to run to and never slowing down. I like that. But it's Fridays in the fall this Mayflower senior loves the most. Every Friday night it's devoted to football, that clarinet and the band. School spirit is something Jessica takes seriously. Not only does she play the clarinet, but she keeps the crowd going by directing the band on the field as its drum major. We give a lot of school spirit to them. We, we, we encourage them to get up. We give them tunes to listen to and to have fun with. We keep it interesting. Jessica takes her grades seriously as well. Evaporation. Despite her busy schedule, occurs, Jessica always makes time for her school work. Studies come first. She just works real hard. If I need something done, she just jumps right in there and does it. I want to go to college and get a history degree. I want to teach history. On behalf of the State Department of Higher Education, congratulations to our Spirit Scholars. And to all students, keep that grade point up. We've got some scholarships waiting on you. Thank you, Lou, and congratulations to Jessica, the Arkansas Department of Higher Education's Spirit Student of the Week. Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, more highlights and the latest rankings from Class 2A, plus B.J. Mack from My Sonic. Tonight it's time to share a little love with everybody else. There's no other place I'd rather start than at a private school. That's Bigelow coach Jeff Starks reminding his team that just 10 years ago, the Panthers were the new kids in the conference. Last night, they were taking on the first year program of Little Rock Christian. And both teams showed early season jitters, combining for seven turnovers in the first half. That's Bigelow's Jerron Armstrong pouncing on the fumbled pitch. But the Panthers would lose the ball on downs to set up Little Rock Christian's best drive of the first half. Here's Warrior sophomore tailback Ryan O'Dell taking the shovel pass and making the Panthers miss. Five plays later, Little Rock Christian is threatening inside Bigelow's 15-yard line. But the snap sails over junior quarterback Peyton Norsworthy's head, and Bigelow's Ryan Thomas recovers. Bigelow failed to score in the first half, but exploded for three touchdowns in the third quarter. Senior Chris Reed led the Panthers with 117 yards rushing, and Bigelow opens four AA conference play with a victory. Final score, Panthers 21, Little Rock Christian 6. Two of the top teams from one of the state's weaker leagues met at the ranch in Little Rock last night. Dan will jump to a 14 to nothing lead on Arkansas Baptist, thanks in part to some good running by Dustin Danner coming right at you. 
Next play, though, the Little Johns fumble, and Arkansas Badness recovers. But the Eagles couldn't do much with it. Danville's Marcus Perez with the big stick on the pitch man, and the Little Johns go on to win it, shutting out Baptist. Final score, Danville 35, Arkansas Baptist nada. And here is Hooters Arkansas Football Class 2A rankings. Harding Academy still on top. This should be the year for the Wildcats. Junction City's number two and Ryzen held on for a victory at Camden Harmony Grove last night. Charleston is 1-0 in the 1-AA. Then it's Barton, the Danville Little Johns rolling over Arkansas Baptist last night. Then it's the Go Devils, Carlisle, Hughes, and the Hazen Hornets who hung 80 points on hapless McCrory last night. Mineral Springs starts the second 10. Desark moves up six spots after knocking off Augusta. Then it's Mark Tree. Augusta drops 11 spots after scoring just six points at Desark. The Rattlers are 15. Jesseville got a big win over Mount Ida in the 5AA. Bearden enters the top 20 for the first time in a long time. Then it's the Buckaroos, Salem, and Hampton. Our preseason number seven team is heading the wrong direction. Now, the Sports Medicine Tip of the Week. I saw football tonight, and thanks again to the Bigelow Panther cheerleaders for that big bad banner. Now, next week, Hooton's Arkansas football cameras will be all across the state. Look for us. Get ready in Lone Oak and Russellville, Monticello up at Springdale, at Dardanelle, and places all across Arkansas, Lone Oak, and many more places. And we hope to see you again next Saturday night with highlights of those teams and many more right here next week at the same time on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Let's take it to him! You stuck it to him and you won it! This is our time of the year.